This is the Gang of Witches Ibiza podcast, hosted by Joe Yule. Each new moon, we'll explore with our guests how to think globally and act locally with ecofeminism. Awaken all your senses. The spirit of the witches comes to your ears. Welcome back to the Gang of Witches of Ether podcast. And since we last met, big questions are being raised over the sustainability of the fishing industry. Netflix documentary Seaspiracy landed at the very end of March. And since then, it feels like a nuclear fallout for not only the ones working within the fishing industry, but also those of us who just like to eat fish occasionally and now feel like this is not something we can ever do again. It was made by the team behind the 2014 film Cowspiracy, backed by Leonardo DiCaprio, and serves up not only a large dish of doubt over the very concept of sustainability, but shines a spotlight on the aquaculture industry as a whole and brings in this idea of blood shrimp slave labour and human rights abuses. A huge sense of responsibility to never eat fish again is handed out by Ali Tabrisi, the journalist and filmmaker from Kent in England, as he looks at the way the Dolphin Safe and Marine Stewardship Council labels may not be able to provide the assurances diners need to be able to enjoy seafood beachside this season. So what does it really look like in the Balearics? Is it safe to eat fish here and how are they caught? Who governs those processes? And what does it really mean for the ecosystems locally? What measures are being taken to make sure they recover and they're not overfished? These are all the questions I had after watching Sea Spiracy because in it we see one label that is also um, singled out, the, the one that we felt that we could all trust and that was vastly and grossly undermined. The dolphin friendly seal of approval was slammed as unreliable. As it was revealed no one is there on board those boats using that stamp to ensure no dolphins are being harmed in the catching of tuna so i wanted to start this podcast chatting to the head of another label someone who really knows um, and that we all know and place our trust in locally which is page nostrum because things are by their very nature quite different here in the balearics in the producers islands we have several marine reserves for starters and the balearics as a whole have 11 each one has its own specific specific rules so for me it feels very important to know exactly how everything works so we're going to be joined by a female fisherwoman who works on a local artisan boat as well as the lady who heads up the fisheries and agriculture local action group called the leader which is also a balearic wide project that protects and oversees our seas locally so for today's show um, as you can hear the waves are lapping in the background <laughs> i'm here um, in Sakaleta in the south of the south of the island and i'm genuinely honored to be able to find out all the answers to the questions racing through my mind since watching sea spiracy because i truly believe there is some form of hope in the fishing world and not everything we see should always be believed until we hear it for ourselves Ladies, welcome to the Gang of Witches of Ether podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you here this evening at Sacoleta. I'm Marga. I'm the marine biologist of the Brotherhood uh, of Fishermen in Ibiza Town under the label of Fish Nostrum. Hi, my name is Ima. I'm work and leader of Ibiza and Formentera. I'm a marine biologist and I work with the fishermen and the, um, the Conseil Ibiza to take uh, results about the fisheries on the island. Hola, soy Maria. I'm Maria, soy I'm a fisherman's pescador, wife and I work at, as a sailor. I help my husband fishing and arranging the boats. So Marga, let's start with you. Um, what does the Page Nostrum label actually mean for the fish that we buy or we find on the island that has that stamp on it exactly? The label of Peixe Nostrum was created to separate the product which is from Ibiza, all the island. You can uh, find the lab label into the products from the Brotherhood of Ibiza Town and from the San Antonio. And it's all, uh, finally, it's all the product from Ibiza. And it was created, one for the difference, and then it's, it was a way to... Um, 
to assure you that this product was fished with all the um, uh, all the stands of sustainability sorry that we are included in our label it's a way also to make you know that this product have been legally fished and it's all controlled because we we are small scale fisheries we work with scientists to keep all the sea resources and also we have the responsibility not only to fish but also to uh, preserve a traditional work our culture our history and it's a part of our identity so all of this it's a patient ostrom it's practically a, a philosophy of of working so how would you characterize or describe the fishing industry specifically on the island of ibiza it's a small scale fisheries the main part of the boats are artisanal fishers which is the most uh, selective way of fishing that means that more or less we can uh, choose or we can decide what we are fishing it depends on the net it depends of the of the kind of fisheries we do and we do the the, the smallest one and then we have also trolling fish uh, boats but we are but they are extremely small <laughs> this is the the more the smallest that we have in in this kind of boats when i started working for example with uh, patient ostrom we have six boats in ibiza town and now we have three of them but they are very important to keep the the structure of the brotherhood for example and it you won't fish the same if you are using artisanal boat or a trolley boat and that we give us that give us uh, the possibility to have a different species and different prices also and I think that more or less is the the one that describes more the the kind of of fisheries that we have. We have 33 fishermen in the Ibiza town. There are 33. Yeah, and all the, in all the island, I think 16. Yeah, more something or less. like this hmm. around all the island. All the island. <laughs> so, as a marine biologist for Patient Ostrom, what exactly is it that you do for them? I started with uh, introducing an, an an environmental educational program. And then we start doing different kinds of <laughs> projects. Uh, we have one uh, related with marine reserve to make all the people know what I, what are marine reserve marine reserves, why we use them, how we uh, keep our marine resources with them. No, it's a way to keep all the marine resources. It's like um, a way to to keep our treasure. It's a place that you can do anything into the integral. No, how do you say that? No take zone reserve for example is a place that you can do anything and then we have different uh, zones when we have controlled different activities uh, including our fisheries or the recreational fisheries and different actions and now we are doing more products i'm sorry more projects uh, to um, for example try that people don't everybody eat the same species that we are more commercial that we want that people start eating the seasonal product which is a way to reduce the pressure under the same always the same species on the sea and and to make the more diversification of the fishermen that helps them to work because sustainability it just it doesn't mean just to keep the resources in a good way The fishermen, if it's a sustainable <laughs> fishery, the fishermen have to be able to work and to earn enough money to live. It's not just to preserve the sea. We, we need to also to preserve the fishermen, which is another uh, important side of the of the, our fisheries. And we are preparing different projects that I will explain you <laughs> in the future because now we are preparing them. But the philosophy or the idea is we know that fishing have an impact. Let's try to reduce the impact that we generate in the way we, we could. We work, for example, with Imma, with uh, Marine Resources. She has been doing a study of Spicaras Maris, which is the, called here the, the Jarret which was one of the seasonal species that we haven't stopped eating for a long time. And she had been uh, studying about it, how important it was in a nutritional way and in, in an economical way. And uh, we, we do this kind of things also, work with scientists to, to try to know how to keep our resources in the best way.
This sounds like really amazing work that you're doing. And, and, and obviously, the, you know, one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to you three ladies today is because um, this new film has landed, the Sea Spiracy documentary. And, you know, a lot of people are kind of saying that have seen it, that they, they never, ever want to eat fish again. And I'm just wondering, you know, how, how that makes you feel. Have you seen it? No, I haven't seen it, but I can imagine. <laughs> because there is a lot of bad information. Because when they say fisheries, they doesn't put they put in the same bag the small scale fisheries and the, and the biggest industry and even the illegal fisheries. So we are not talking about the same. This is a way for us to work. This is part of our gastronomy, our culture. We are not uh, this kind of, of fisheries that just, they just want to earn money and they doesn't matter how much they fish and they doesn't matter the way they sail this fish and this is another thing this, these are not fisheries this is a, a mafia this is an, another kind of, of, of action I, don't, I never feel identified with this kind of fisheries somebody told me or give me some information about Seaspiracy like saying oh my god I'm sorry for you what they are saying and I said I don't feel identified Inma, um, what, what, what did you know? Have you seen Seaspiracy? No, I don't see it, but we work like we make the, the support like biologists to uh, monitoring the fisheries because the fishermen of the island try to not take more fishes than they can do it. And they work a lot to preserve the species of the island because they know the um, the variability of the fishes in the island is so important for their job and their lifestyle. And biologists here try to monitor and have not take more fishes than are essential. And I think it's important to, to put a light that the fishermen have protect areas to um, assure fisher for years after them. When we do the co-management uh, meetings to see how are working our marine reserves, for example, one of the um, organizations that come, it's uh, WWF, for example, the NGO, and that's, um, to, to, that's a way to assure that we are doing things right. It's not just our fishermen that say we are very small scale fisheries and we are the best. They, are, they tell you also the NGOs and the scientists as, as Imma says because there is a lot of work um, with, the, with the small scale fisheries so that hurts when somebody say that we are uh, finishing with all the life of the sea that's completely false because we have a lot of people working with them, always with them to assure the future of our seas because if you know the fishermen you know that the sea is, is their lives you know agriculture and, and and fishing has been you know back in the ancient ancient history of Ibiza so of course this is a you know a trade that's been going on for for thousands of years I, you know there was no documented evidence of associations to organize the commercialization of fishing fresh fish until the 20th century why why do you think we need a label like Peixe Nostrum? Because here in Balearic Island it's very typical to buy fish that it's not from the professional fishermen or not legally fished. So it's our way to fight against uh, against that. You can ask in Ibiza, in Mallorca, in Menorca, in Formentera. It doesn't matter. It's very typical to 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 buy and to sell. And that's the problem because it's like something cultural <laughs> and it's not a good way to do the things. So that's why we introduced the the marks and the and the level of page nostrum. I mean, obviously this is a pirate island. We all know that, you know, dodgy things go on in the background. And I guess the question is, you know, how does how does someone sitting down in a restaurant in a in a beach restaurant this summer know where that fish has come from? How can we find out I guess which restaurants are buying specifically Peche Nostrum approved catch. The problem here is that what, what I was introducing to you at the beginning there is a, a lot of people that wants to eat fish and uh, we don't fish enough to all the people that wants to, to eat uh, uh, fresh fishes so we know that we have um, legal species. We have another uh, products that arise from Alicante or Mallorca or something 
what we tried is to difference our product. If they sell you something which is from Ibiza, you might see that it's from Ibiza. And apart from that, we have the, the other part that I told you from the pirates. <laughs> but the problem is that not all the fish in Ibiza is from Ibiza and not can and it's impossible to have all the product that people want to. Now I totally understand and as we all know, you know, in the summertime there's a hell of a lot of people here wanting to eat fish and I think that also in winter it's is difficult to to obtain product to everybody. <laughs> so how can we be sure that the fish that we trust and buy under the label page Nostrum is adhering to the guidelines of what is and what isn't allowed? If you see the label of Peche Nostrum, it's from Peche Nostrum. If you go to the supermarket or to a fishery, you look for the, the label. If you go to a restaurant, the biggest species have the plastic that we want to change from a, <laughs> another kind of, of material. But now, uh, today is from, it's made of plastic. The plastic label, which Peche Nostrum? For example, in lobsters, the, the grouper, for example. And... The biggest one, if you if they told you that this lobster is from Ibiza, you can ask for your label and it's an, a number, which is like the DNA. It's, the, it's exclusive from that animal. So if you can ask for this and keep it at home. And if they say that there is no mark, it's not from Ibiza or... <laughs> okay, so basically ask... In the restaurant, if you're that interested on, on where it's come from and you're that bothered, you need to ask that question. So, you know, what are the guidelines that are in place in the Balearics that so that our fisheries are not overfished? I think that it's all that Ima was saying. We have a lot of work. Write it down. We know how much they, uh, how all the quantities that they have been fishing, what they have, they have been fishing. And all these numbers are not lost in the, <laughs> in the air. The scientists use them to know if we are doing the things right. If, for example, I can't fish 100 kilos, for example, for one species uh, for one year, for example, and I'm not arriving to 25, it's obvious that we are doing something wrong. So that's why they are all the time looking at these numbers. Every year we have a book with all these numbers. And, and that's what I always say. Maybe today I can fish... Uh, 1,000 kilos, but that maybe next year, I don't know, because this can change. So every time we have to know <laughs> what is changing. Uh, with the protected species, it's the same. Now with sharks and uh, rays, uh, we have more, um, there are more species prohibited. And they came from the government and they explain us, hey, this one you can't fish now. It's like that. If you are not sure if it's that one, you can send us the photo and then we will tell you if it, that one is correct or it's not correct. So that's why I told you, fishermen really knows what they are doing all the time. And we, if we don't know it, we have a control <laughs> and we, the uh, inspectors. And it's everything more controlled than people think. They, also, they always think that we are just taking a net and put it on the sea and 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 that's all and no <laughs> there is a lot of work with with fisheries in your mind is there such a thing that exists as sustainable fishing how can we do that and what does it mean when patient nostrum say that the fish is caught people always relate this is what i told you the sustainability with having a lot of fishes and with we we need to continue fishing we need to keep our marine resources, but we need to keep our fishermen. So sustainability is the three parts. is the economy, is the environment, and it's, it's all also the social part of the sustainability. Always when somebody talks about sustainable, they just think that sustainable is a lot of fishers in the sea. If I'm talking about uh, sustainable fisheries, I need fishes on the sea, but I need my fishermen and fisherwomen in their boats on the sea. And that's why we are trying to do, to keep all the fishes and all the fishermen and women and the biologists working every day to keep our marine resources. And that's why we try to do in Peche Nostrum. Thank you. That makes sense. Totally. Of course... 
the biggest question that came up in Seaspiracy was, well, not even the question, the statement, there is no such thing as sustainable fishing. And my question is, you know, what are the parameters of sustainable fishing? It seems a very bold statement to say there is no such thing because clearly it feels like maybe in the Balearics there is a lot more care taken to be sustainable. I haven't seen it, but I can imagine it. They want to create... Um, polemic thing. They want to be seen. They want to. They are not. And they. I imagine that they have no an objective vision of the of the fisheries. If I'm an, uh, if I'm vegan, maybe I will. Maybe I don't consider that all the vegans think the same. But maybe I will uh, speak about uh, animal cruelty or about fishermen in a very different way than if it's explain it by a fisherman or a fisherwoman. So you have to to see, you have to judge, but don't consider that if it's a film or I have seen it in YouTube or if I, uh, if I have seen it, it doesn't matter where. It's the truth. So I, I, could ima- I can imagine the, the, the document, uh, the, doc- the, the film, and I imagine that it's not an objective film I imagine that I think that they are criticizing something some things that I have heard that I say okay that's that's true because there are some things that that yeah they they it can be true but like it, what like for example there are some uh, sustainable certifications that you have to pay to obtain them and who can pay for uh, this kind of certification could pay a very small scale fisheries to pay to certificate that it's very sustainable or could pay another one which is biggest maybe the other one the the small one is also sustainable but they can't obtain it does it mean that the smaller one it's not sustainable okay it's very nice that we have a a sustainable certification and it have and it's important that it exists But the other one, the smallest one, they are also like that. So that's why I told you there are a lot of different things that we have to consider. At the end of the day, it's very interesting to hear this from your perspective because I think a lot of people have a lot of questions and I think it's important for this podcast to come out before the summer, before people come to the island. They want to eat fish and right now I'm not eating fish because I I want to I want to know. I want to know what the answer is. The question for me is and I, and I and I will make you think with this. If I say that fishing is killing fish, then I can say that a language is just for speaking. Is that true? Is that true? So if it's not true, because maybe it's not true, we are not considering all the points included in this. If fishing is just taking, killing fishes, or it's more than this. And we can do it in a different ways. And, and we are keeping all the tradition, all the culture, all the gastronomy. I don't want you to eat fishes if you are vegan or vegetarian. I want you to understand the importance of this job and this activity. Last week, we saw um, that the European Union is working on a, on a series of restrictions to reduce by 40% the number of days on which drag boats can go out to work, which in essence would mean the 35 boats which are based in the ports in the Balearic Islands will experience a major reduction in their commercial activity. That style of fishing, from what I've seen in the film, for example, um, and what I've experienced myself, can only be a good thing for the island's ecosystem. But what do you think about that? If we, we, when I started working with Peche Nostrum, we have six uh, trolleys, boats and uh, today we have three now we have we are studying the how sustainable they are today if we stop having these boats the reality is that we will have to close our brotherhoods because only with the artisanal fisher fishermen and women we won't be able to keep all the structure then we won't have local fisheries, we won't have Peche Nostrum anymore, we won't have mm, legal fish from Ibiza. And people who like to eat this kind of products will want to continue eating them. So 
from where we will obtain this product from from other fisheries which uses what our artisanal boats or the trawlers which are biggest than the one that we have here think about it so are you saying that without the trawling boats there's not enough fish to feed the people that want to eat it i'm saying that now we are studying how sustainable is uh, our trolley uh, today because we know that without them we won't be able to continue we have more restrictions in this kind of fisheries that we used to have in the past they have changed a lot they doesn't fish on the um, Posidonia that's completely false <laughs> it's not allowed to do this we have a uh, biggest holes in the net that we used to have they have changed a lot in in the past now from the other days and now we are studying if these four boats for all the island is as dangerous like uh, Europe consider or maybe if we have different particularities in in the different places but this kind of of things used to happen because we have another something like that with the uh, jarret fishery that they they say that it was one kind of of nets that it's not allowed to use and then we explain that that it was a little bit different and now we are using them so europe says something normally and then everybody explain their own cases <laughs> okay so it's not as terrible as everybody reads so yes with this particular point we started last year a study of the trolling in the islam we have four boats in the island that can have fisheries around the the Vita and Formentera. We start a study with my colleague. Uh, we stay on the boats because the the fishermen, the fisherwoman ask for this and they want to demonstrate they they are sustainable uh, and they try to demonstrate that their particularity are real. And we we'll stay with them and go every week and look the catch and the bycatch and take notes about all the things and have a study of the species that arrive to the port and the species that they take. And this is one part of the study. And the other part of the study is the impact of the trolling in the economy of the, the fisher of the island. And it's quite important because like... Marga says it's impossible to have all the things that are around of the fishery to co commercialize, take the studies and support all these things. It's important, the trolling, because without them, the small scale, the traditional fisheries can support it. And we work with them with, with this and to have... Uh, another big problem that they have that have the stationality of the island because in Ibiza have a big volume of people in summer and have anyone in winter and we need to to have uh, more uh, productive the things that they cut on winter and we have a case to transform it these things and to conserve it to the summer but I think it's quite important and that all trolling is a little little trolling they just work a few hours and they take a little volume of fishes and they have a big uh, normative that don't allow do a lot of things And I think all the fishermen and the fishwomen of the island are really um, implicated in the conservation of the island and the environment. Once upon a time in Ibiza with Joanna Ruby. Mare Nostrum, who are the spirits that govern you? In your deep waters, in your shallow waters, which are the souls whose echoes ring clear? 
Down here there is the tangled net of a fisherman, dancing lonely on the current. A thousand men of net and line have woven these seas, followed winds and tides to harvest endless crops of gleaming, scale-covered silver. Yes, Mari Nostrum, the soul of a fisherman echoes in you. Down here lie the silky forests of the seagrass beds, suspended like spilled black ink, named after the Greek god whose rages could make the whole of the Mediterranean shudder. Always pour your honeyed wine into the waves and honour him before you sail. Yes, Mare Nostrum, the soul of Poseidon echoes in you. Down here there are the stolen treasures of a pirate, enclosed within a sunken wooden hull. For they battered these shores for centuries, sometimes triumphant, sometimes slaughtered by the island's fierce protectors. These seas are filled with salt and filled with blood. Yes, Mare Nostrum, the soul of a pirate echoes in you. And down here lies the clay figurine of a goddess, broken into perfect earth-coloured pieces. A thousand sailors arrived safely at their destinations, or did not, with Tanit's promise of protection sealed in their hearts like the terracotta shape pressed to their chests. Yes, Mare Nostrum, the soul of a goddess lives in you. Mare Nostrum, these and more are the spirits that govern you. In your deep waters, in your shallow waters, these are the souls whose echoes ring clear. Mare Nostrum, may your salty kingdom preserve these echoes, so that we may all continue to hear. <laughs> If the European Union wants to restrict the amount of trawling, I mean, that's an interesting thing. And it was something that obviously came up in the film about this idea of bycatch. And I mean, I understand that you're saying, you know, there are rules, there are regulation, but who is actually there on that boat when the net gets brought in? And how do we know, you know, how do we know what bycatch is being brought in? Yes, we go with them to take notes and uh, can demonstrate the volume of bycatch is really insignificantly uh, compared with the fisher. We do all we can to, to have less bycatch, to take all the things to, to the land and do something with them. Okay, I understand. So you try and make use of the other things that are caught at the same time. Today it's very common to have a, a biologist or a scientist on a, on a fisherman or fisherwoman boat. Mm -hmm. In the past it was very strange, but that's what she told you. They have been on the boat, on the trolleys, watching and taking notes of all the bycatch, all the species they take. So it's what I told you, it's... It, there is a lot of job with everything, with okay. all, the, all the all the fisheries. It's it's very controlled. For example, today we were on the on the Brotherhood, and we have a, an inspection in there. They arrived two pers two people, and they were uh, we were we have an inspection, and it's very common. You can be there. You arrive on the port, and and you have there somebody who is going to see what you have on your boat. Mm. It's extremely controlled, mm. and it must be extremely controlled. But no one's there when the fish when the fishing net gets pulled onto the deck. And she say, "I'm going to uh, today. I will go on the boat." And she's there when when the net is on the boat. She's there watching. Obviously, we can have some species uh, that we don't want to fish, but that's why she's in there to see all the fishes that won't have to be in there, and they are to control them, to know how much or if they are a lot or are not enough or are not too much and to control this. And if something is not right, we change it. The whole of the nets, they are biggest than they used to be, for example. So you are on every boat that goes trawling in Ibiza or locally? My colleague go with them because I'm used to go to the traditional boats that are so selective. And my colleague go to the um, the trolling and go with all of them one time a week, something like this, to to revisit 
registrate all the things that they take. But I used to go to the traditional nets and they are so selective because they know the sea, they know where they can put the nets to take the fishes that they need because they know more of the sea than ever we will know and they know where put the nets, where what days have to go and have a selective fishes because they are the first interested in this mm -hmm. that before you said that if they go every day when you do this kind of studies you need a, a number if they go 200 days fishing in a statistic you don't need to be all the day in there no one uses the cent the 100 of the days or something when you make a study you have a, a number of days what you have to go I don't think that just the day that Ima's not on the boat is the day that you have all the bike catch of the world <laughs> and, and everything explodes. Faced with the challenges posed by the sustainability of fishery resources, marine reserves have proven to be one of the most effective ideas that allow the rearing and the growth of fingerlings of marine species that once adult allow the activity to survive fishery. So in Ibiza and Formentera, there are three major reserves. Can you just tell us a little bit about how marine reserves actually work? Well, the first one we had was the one of the spreus, the spreus from Ibiza and Formentera, which is the second one, uh, the second biggest from the Balearic Island, and it's from... And this, when we do a management, the meetings of the management and the studies of the reserve effect that you study if they are growing, you, you use certain species to control the growth of the population and say that uh, all, uh, although all the tourist pressure that we have in here, they are doing their function of, of to increase the, um, the marine resources. The other one, which is the, the last one, we did the one from Tagumago, it's, it, it's not still four years old, that it's the time that you start doing these uh, studies of the reserve effect. The last studies that report that the marine protect areas of the Pithiusas, Ibiza and Formentera, uh, have an effect that they started to increase some of them and they have uh, the function that is have a nocturnal zone that where the fishes can grow and after this they go out and the fishermen can take it and now we are trying to do the for example in Tagumago to make it bigger because we know that they are important for the marine resources we know that there will be one place that nobody will do anything but we know that it's important to sacrifice this this space uh, in order to obtain the, the best results uh, about conservating. It's important to remarkate that these marine protected areas are um, do it by the fishermen and the fishwomen of the island, not for the, um, the inspectors or something like this. And we do the studies that they need to decide where is the best place and they do it because they know the importance of these marine protected areas for the fishes of the island and for their future. Well, you know, we've talked about some of the themes of sea spiracy, but one of their claims is that the oceans will be empty by 2048 that year. What, what do you think about that? Before the COVID crisis in Ibiza, we have increased 20% of the demand of the local product vegetable and agriculture and, and fisheries also. So that means that people in here, for example, we are, have changed our mind and now we are supporting our environment and our, our agriculture and our economies. Which is important and, you know, it's amazing to see the increase in demand for local produce because we've talked about this in other episodes on the podcast, specifically episode two where we interviewed the farmers and uh, from the leader and you know local women rural women who are you know very passionate about this so of course it's also important to be clear and to understand that the fish that we are eating in Ibiza 
is safe and comes locally. I mean, Inma, obviously it's your job as part of the leader to help Ibiza and Formentera protect their fisheries and make sure the way the fishing is done, um, you know, in keeps with the ecosystems being safe for the future. So what systems are actually in place currently to make sure that species recover after that they're you know after they're taken out of the sea we i now i studied three species and the one of them that says marga that's because maris and this start to study because europe do not allow the fishers and the other two st- two species that i study is because it's an objective of the fishers we try to know what is the limit of the take and never pass it. For example, we with the lobster, we come back to the sea, the little one, and the females with eggs to support this this species. And we try to to have under control all the species. Now we started with this, but we will we keep working with them they know if they take all the lobsters a year the next year they can do it and is they prefer stop a day if it's necessary than have um overfishing very good to know this kind of fisheries are in 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 extinction danger and when we hear all the day and all the time that we are overfishing and we are destroying the sea it really hurts because it's not true. And the other day, I want the other thing I want to say <laughs> uh, about what uh, Ima was saying. For uh, fisheries, it's very important to have all these uh, scientists because maybe a fisherman or a fisherwoman could have uh, the the um, the feeling that something is going wrong about fishing, no, or one species of something, and the scientists help us to translate it into a, a, a numbers and that numbers it could be used to manage and to do this regulation that's what she was explaining maybe I think that uh, we can uh, fish more speakers maris or we can't do it better or we need to make the people that eat more speakers maris because of what I was saying you before if everybody wants to eat lobster we will finish with the lobster let's make the people taste other species so how can we fish in appropriate way the speaker is maris and arrives in ma and show us the way that we can do it how how we can do it all the quantities and that's why it's very very important to work all together i think it's important that she says the fishermen and fishwoman traditional are now uh, a species in danger and I think it's for us it's important to protect them because they know the sea, they care the sea, and they work for the sea. And if they disappear, we lost a, a big barrier of our culture and of the at the end, like consumer consumers, we lost these people that give you this free fresh fish. No, aquí el, el principal problema que hay en toda la isla, no solo en Chacaleta, en toda la isla, es el furtivismo. Porque esta gente hacen una pesca selectiva, pero mm, no respetan para nada lo, ni las tallas, ni los pesos, ni nada. Y es que encima lo venden, no es para consumo propio, es para venderlo. Eh, llegan a, a llegar aquí con 30 gallos, con 20 rollas, con que a lo mejor... Nosotros ni en toda ni en toda la semana cogemos eso. Y luego la, la langosta tiene una veda. ¿eh? O sea, aquí ha venido, ha venido algunos furtivos enseñando langostas fuera de la época eh, cigala, la cigala imperial, que es el cigala aquí de, del, del Mediterráneo, que también tienen una veda. Todo esto ellos no respetan nada. Yo lo tengo que respetar porque como me pillen con eso me, dan, me ponen una multa que no tengo ni para pagar. Pero ellos a lo suyo. Muy mal. Muy mal. <laughs> Thank you, Maria. And, and uh, you know, obviously illegal fishing then is, is a bit of a problem here. Yeah. 
is the biggest problem that they can do it here because they don't respect the size, they don't respect the time to not take the species, they don't respect the number of fishes that can take and the fishermen, the fisherwomen here have uh, very big uh, restrictions and they stay every time in the legal part They have a security way to to salt it, and this part of the illegal fisheries not have any control, any sanitary sanitary control, and they take all the fishes. Yeah, they says we are more selectivity. Yeah, but you take a lot of fishes of the same species and under control. The biologist can say if the species are okay, if you take all you want. We need that these types of things uh, finished because it's really bad for the fishermen because they sold it with another price and they collapsed the market and it's, uh, very, it's a big problem to the the fisherman and the fisherwoman for the Iceland. How, how, how much of a problem? I mean, how many boats are there out there fishing illegally? Because I heard that there was a lot of problems with uh, tuna tuna boats coming in, illegal fishing boats that take tuna. And, and, also, and, and also, you know, I'm <laughs> sure many other, I'm sure many other species besides are also having this issue. I think the main problem of the illegal fishing is because somebody is buying them. If you don't buy it, Nobody will sell it to you. So it's it's extremely common. If it's not a restaurant who will buy this product, will buy you your neighbor or your friend or somebody. doesn't matter because it's what uh, Ima was saying. Maybe if I told you that this fish, I'm a fisherman, this fish is 20 euros. But the illegal fisher will tell you it's 10 because she's not paying anything. Just just they earn <laughs> earn money. So it's a very, very big problem. And I don't, they don't have all the numbers because we don't know uh, which quantity of fishes are fishing all these illegal fishers, men and women. And also the recreational uh, fishermen. Uh, also, we don't have all the quantities that they extract. We have just the quantities of the professional. And we need more numbers because it's not truth the numbers we have of how uh, all the quantities we are fishing at the end of the year and we are trying to obtain more numbers and another important problem is that it's very very difficult to control all the illegal fishing because maybe maria see one people or two people catching illegal fishes but when she calls to the inspection They need to arrive, and when they arrive here, we don't know where they are. Maria can go and call <laughs> and run with them. It is, and it's very difficult to control. It's extremely difficult. So I think that people must think about these things that they are doing. Stop buying illegal fishing because it's not good for to and no one. Can you ask Maria? Does she, does she see a lot of illegal fishing when she's out on yeah. her boat? She was molta pesca ilegal aquí. Mucha, mucha. A lot, mucha. a lot, a lot. Cada every day, día. every day. Día, a lot, mucho, mucho. a lot, a lot. This is a place that uh, you can put Hold. your boat on the on the water in there. So people that have a zodiac or a small boat, they arrive, they put their boat on the sea, they go fishing, and then go to they go home, and that's it. So Maria, you work for or under the jurisdiction of Page Nostrum. So how do you how do you feel when you see these illegal fishermen out on the on the on the water? Pues muy frustrada. Muy mal porque esta gente no Well, very frustrated. Very bad because these people don't pay taxes, they don't pay for fees, they don't pay the guild, they don't pay anything. Then we sell the fees cheaper than them because they sell it more expensive. They sell it more expensive than us. Because I have customers who buy fees from me and they don't buy it from me, even though they sell it more expensive. What she means is that uh, when you, for example, we go fishing and we, at the end of the day, imagine, no, we have two lobsters and three groupers. And 
the illegal fishermen, they don't have any regulation. So if I'm a restaurant, for example, and I said, I need 10 groupers, the illegal fisher goes and take 10 groupers and here you have 10 groupers. And maybe they can sell you, they, uh, for, they can ask to you for more money because you will have these groupers. We never or practically never fish any grouper and in all the restaurants you can find them. Some of them are legal and not from Ibiza, but could be it's possible <laughs> that some of them come from we don't know where. And that's why it was because she was speaking, she was saying that they are more selective. And I said, mm, I don't understand what they what she means. And that she, she said that because you can say, what do you want? No, in the Brotherhood, we know what we have. This day, and we can't organize the different boxes with all the things we have. But this is, for us, this is not a supermarket. We can't go and there, I want three groupers and five lobsters. We can't do that. The illegal fishermen can do that. That's, that's very unfair and very annoying. And uh, yeah, I mean, what, what's, the, what's the biggest challenges that you're facing at, at the moment when you're, when you're out, you know, doing your job? Mostly the weather is good, but the dolphins are a disaster, a total disaster. I understand that they are fish, very nice fish that they are in the sea. That is the, the natural habitat, their home. But for us, the dolphins are a disaster, a real disaster. To this day, there is no solution. There is uh, no one to give you a grant to fix your nets and your gear. Nothing for that. But I guess it's what it is. They are things of nature. And even through the restrictions with the canned fish, the closed seasons, for example, there is a typical fish of the Mediterranean, called rabo, which can only be fished from September 1st. And there are people who right now, in the sunny days, are already fishing it. The lobster also has its own rules. They have a size restriction, which is very logical because they are very small. But of course, they will grow for next year. Las vedas, sobre todo las vedas, porque, claro, a lo mejor, como ahora está incluso la, la atmósfera está todo cambiado, todo revuelto, eh, nada es cuando toca ni cuando es la época, y, y hay que, pero bueno, hay que habituarse a lo que hay y ya está. Okay. Say to you? Yes. <laughs> okay, she says the first problem is the weather, because they need a good weather to go out. And the second problem for them is the dolphins, because they know they stay in their home, and but they have any solution to the problems that the dolphins cause in their nets, because anyone helps them. And the other problem is the not take time, because they know it's important the size of the fishes and the respect the time to not take time. But the illegal fishers take the fishes when can't do it. And for us it's really bad because they can't compete with them. So what is the issue with the dolphins? I wanted to talk to you about that. I mean, obviously Sea Shepherd have a big kind of campaign against this. And we know that there's a lot of uh, dolphins in Ibiza and, and it is a cause for concern. I think, you know, that was one of the big issues raised in Sea Spiracy. We had this idea that this label of dolphin friendly tuna is not actually friendly after all. So it's interesting to, to at least talk about this because obviously Maria has raised, you know, the fact that it causes uh, causes her a disaster I think is what you said <laughs> how how does that how does that affect your work well we are affected by the issue of the nets because the dolphin is a species that when it bites is the only one the only species that goes backwards so it bites the fish that it's on the net 
It goes backwards and pulls up all the fish and the whole net. For example, a month ago, we put in eight new nets and they are ready now to be thrown away again and they have been out to, the, to sea only three times and they are ready to be thrown away. Thank you, Maria. I, yeah, that's interesting. And, and yeah, I can understand, you know, obviously in Seaspiracy, we saw, you know, the dolphins being killed and murdered en masse because the fishermen in Thailand and places like that feel that they are taking all of the fish. But clearly, I mean, in this case, maybe un poquito, but ultimately, you know, it's not a reason to kill the dolphins. And I know that that's not what you're trying to do. So it's a confusing issue. That's what I want when you say that it's Tana uh, dolphin safe. We not kill dolphins here. The problem is that they break the fishes, they break the nets. And we can't do anything. We can't uh, even annoy them because they are protected. They are, I don't know how do you say, a, a vulnerable species. And you can't even annoy them. You can do nothing. <laughs> not a bomb, not a, a big noise, not, nothing. You can do nothing. Just uh, pick up your nets and, and cry. Because no, this is what she told you. No one gives them a solution. We have tried in the Brotherhood to to promote a, pro a project or something that pay them because if you have um, animals and it arrives a bear or arrives a wolf and kill your your animals uh, they pay you for the animals that have killed the bear or the the bear of the or the wolf because you can't kill the bear <laughs> or the wolf and here on the sea we won't kill the dolphin but we want a solution can you pay us the nets can you pay us the the fishes that they have broken and the answer always is the same one <laughs> and that's why they are not so much in love with them who gets to actually measure what is or is not sustainable then who, who you know who can classify who can classify that yeah like marga says sustainable is a difficult concept because it's not just the fishes on the sea, or the fishermen, the fishwoman, or the economy, is something that have a relation with the tradition, with the people, with the sea, with the fishes. And I think sustainable is um, find or place in this thing, in the, the sea. And it's quite important to to realize that more people live for the sea with the sea is important to stay together i want to say that future will tell us if we have been su sustainable or not the present tell us that we are trying the reality is that we are losing our fishermen and fisher women in our fisheries, we have very old people fishing, but we have a little bit of hope because <laughs> we have uh, some young new fishermen and women that wants to come and fish again. I mean, to wrap this up, we have these amazing in the Balearics marine reserves, 11 of them doing, you know, incredible work to stop a lot of, uh, you know, fishing happening and also to protect the ecosystem so that the resource continues to remain so it's really only the illegal fishing that is the main issue that we're, 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 we're facing everybody's talking also today about sustainable tourism and sustainable tourism also it's not only the environment it's also the local product the local people the local culture that culture the local language and if you want a real sustainable um, holiday give support to this and try to look and, and read as, as she said and ask for a local product and is uh, the people have a lot of power when they take the responsible decision okay ladies thank you so so much for joining me here on the gang of witches of the podcast episode number six it's been an absolute joy to sit here watching the sun sinking over sacoletta thank you welcome thanks to you you're welcome thanks to you thank you did you know local food can save the planet so join the local food movement and host a local food feast for world localization day between june the 15th and june the 20th 
A local food feast could be anything, from a family dinner at home to a feast with friends, colleagues or neighbours. The challenge is to source primarily local ingredients. We can change the world from the bottom up, starting with where we get our food. For more information, go check on worldlocalizationday.org. It was the Ibiza podcast of Gang of Witches, hosted by Joe Yule. See you at the next new moon. Until then, take care of yourselves. You got